Okay, my name is James. Uh, I am an architect and together with Alex Turner and Graham Byrne set up Studio Mutt at the end of 2017 um, and we're in Liverpool it's primarily a studio in Liverpool so we're split between Liverpool and London and we're also still in an exhibition called In Character at the RODA. I don't think there's a definition of architecture necessarily. I think our approach to architecture is fairly open uh, and fairly ranging from small scale projects to large scale urban projects. So small scale projects like this, we consider architecture. Um, I mean, we actually set up Studio Mutt initially as a, a kind of multidisciplinary practice. We thought we thought that um, we would do art projects and installations and graphic projects and architecture as well as our kind of main approach. But then we soon realised that everything did was actually architecture just in different mediums, I suppose. So we, we all studied in Liverpool initially, undergraduate, so we knew about the city. So when we came to set up a practice, we were, um, we were quite keen to uh, not be solely based in London, but, uh, because we felt some sort of attraction to the north. None of us were originally from London, um, from Wigan, Newcastle and the West Midlands. And Liverpool is someone that's always interested us. Uh, and for personal reasons, really. <laughs> quite like Liverpool as a city, it's quite fun. <laughs> so all this stuff behind me is an installation which we were originally commissioned for by the Soane Museum, so the Soane Museum in London. And they approached us and asked us to create an installation that was somehow dispersed throughout the Soane Museum. So for people that don't know Soane Museum, it's this amazing, um, amazing gallery in London, which is the kind of life and work of John Soane, this Victorian architect, who um, throughout his life kind of slowly collected all these objects and, um, and slowly kind of adjusted his house to fit these objects. So it's kind of part gallery, part house, part office, uh, part kind of university, I suppose, he used to teach his students that. Uh, so we got permission by the Soane Museum uh, to put these objects in and we had to somehow react to the Soane Museum. And we found this quite strange and um, peculiar text, which was um, about Lincoln's field itself, which John Soane wrote but never got published, so it's just in kind of sketch format. Um, it's called Crude Hints Towards the History of Film. And it was him imagining in the future 200 years time or so the building is a ruin and then what people may what people may think of that place and who may have lived there. And in this kind of strange text which is somehow uh, revealing towards his psychological state at the time and how he regarded his legacy, he described that perhaps belong to an architect or a magician or uh, some sort of religious person, a monk or a lawyer because it's within the kind of the field and within the of lawyers around. And so we've kind of, we try to then represent those people through architectural forms. Uh, another part of the brief was to somehow relate to ornament. So these are kind of very much about ornament and decoration and our kind of approach to them. So we decide, decided shortly after the Soane Museum exhibition finished that we would like to re-exhibit them somewhere else because when we exhibited them around the Soane Museum the, um, you never saw more than one at once and they were kind of hidden away in different corners trying to relate to the museum very directly and we thought actually there's probably a life afterwards to, um, to exhibit them as a kind of standalone piece um, and they're where people could see them all together in one space. And so, um, through talking to the people at Reba North, we realised there may be an opportunity to, to exhibit them here. And so for the show here, we've tried to, um, to recontextualise them in a way. So, tried to, because they were so site-specific to the Soane Museum, we felt it was important not to just bring them to Liverpool and they would be kind of strange because 
or, or people can, wouldn't be able to get it because there's no stone museum around, there's no context for them to relate to. So for this exhibition we've tried to re recreate a new context for them. Peculiar. Um, a collector. And um, I'll say magician, which is a bit corny, but he was always very clever with how he used light, I suppose, as an artist. And what he's kind of famous for is his use of light and coloured light and how to get light deep into plants. Personally, why I got into architecture was kind of by chance, I suppose. Like, um, I mean, I teach briefly now, and you kind of have to try and make students realise that it's not just because you chose it as a degree doesn't mean you have to continue to do it for your life. Um, but it just so happened, you know, you're kind of 18 years old, and to be honest, you're like, well, what do I do? Go to uni and study? And I was interested in art, and I was interested in buildings, and. In fact, one of the one of the reasons I um, studied architecture, actually, one of the very direct reason, is so around 2000, uh, the kind of millennial celebrations in Warsaw, which is the small town I'm from in the Midlands, there was the Warsaw Art Gallery built by Crusoe Sinjin, and it went on. I think it won the Sterling Prize, but it was just this amazing building to come to a kind of really small post-industrial town, which nothing much was happening, and then you had this really exciting kind of building that in some way eclipsed the art for me, I suppose, when I went to see it. So then I thought, okay, I'll go study architecture. I kind of wary, I'm kind of wary of trying to tell people what to think of it, or like what to, what, what it's about even. And I mean, I suppose we're interested to, to find out what, what the viewers think of it and what they take from it. The other way around, I don't think it's really our, our place to sort of say this is what it's about. It's actually about trying to engage a viewer so that they can take something away from themselves and it's up to them what they, what they want to take from it. So I'd say Mutt is diverse. Diverse is one. In um, the work we've undertaken and the kind of style of the project as well. I think, I think some of our early stuff that we've done, I mean we've only been running like a year and a bit and so by the nature of those projects they're quite small, quite short and um, some of them temporary so you can be quite flamboyant or quite um, expressive in them because they are, that, that's the nature of them, they, they're kind of eye-catching, like joyous moments but then um, I think we're diverse in the way that we uh, We'll change our, our style. We're not interested in just just you know these are kind of associated, I suppose, with a certain style. I would say we're rigorous. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um, we like to kind of get into quite a lot of detail quite early on in terms of how how something should look if we're designing it. Um, I would say that we are. Um, Thieves, <laughs> in a way. I think when we work, we always we we don't really believe in this idea of some sort of radical newness. That you've got to come up with something incredibly original. Like I think actually, the way we work is um, is kind of cumulative. That we always try and build on something out of a place that we've been experienced or something we've seen or other people's work. That you know, architectural history is however many years. Uh, long it didn't start yesterday so we don't feel like we have to start everything again so we're quite happy to kind of piggyback on other ideas and in that way I think you get uh, a lot more meaning a lot more borrowed meaning in projects you know there's kind of associative meaning to certain forms or certain materials or certain certain designs design approaches so we find that more interesting our website is studiomut.com you can find us on there and then we also post a lot of stuff via Instagram which is at studio mutt M-U-T-T -T.